The boss and the big boys are always up front doing their thing. I'm happy to stay out of the spotlight. I'm Talon, aerial assaulter, a sniper, the scapegoat. No matter what happens, it always comes back to me. It's how it's always been and how it'll always be. And again, it's not like I don't deserve it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and the hour of Feral Rex draws near. Mastermind Creation's Talon has arrived, belatedly taking his R02 spot in the reformatted line about three figures behind schedule. Talon went through a ton of tweaking, retooling, and rejiggering in his production, so let's see how things finally turned out for this dive-bombing desperado. Talon's alt mode is that of a robot eagle, so is G1 Dive Bombs, and he looked kind of like a bird-themed robot block with wings and a head. Talon follows suit, for better or for worse. He does have a more impressive sculpt with actual legs and a much more convincing head and neck. His avian skull is a deliciously pointy curvature with piercing gold eyes, and I think it works, man. The legs are a little too chunk for my taste, but they get the message across, and Talon's talons are all the right shapes. Unfortunately, he also has these two huge orange things stuck to the sides of his body that go out of their way to shatter the illusion as much as they can. At least the wings compensate in how huge and majestic they are. Those feathers are exactly what I wanted. And those colors feel super duper right out of my childhood. Dive Bomb is in some of my earliest toddler memories, so I'll give a legit shout out to the ridiculous number of pages of Pantone discussion over in the TFW mega thread. As for paint apps, the main ones are done in a cold, cold gold. These include some lovely lower leg work, at least the largest outer feathers, and the eagle eyes. He's got a very MMC sculpt with plenty of vents, ridges, and edges to add texture to the simple color work. Did you know this hawk, eagle, bird thing can have weapons stored in his backpack like that? Well, now you do. Um, there's other places you can stick these. There are holes everywhere. Like, if you want to, say, have knives sticking off of his wings, then it's a little bit tough. But, yo, you can have knives sticking off of his wings. As for those wings, let's talk about how poseable they are. So, there is... Bit of revealed sculpting actually when you do this, but there's a uh, motion in this direction which reveals all this inner railing spinal stuff. And then while you're doing that, you can also flap them and you can also wave them out like this. And these things get friggin' wide, man. Like that's hand length. And each of these little feathers can move on their own. If I had a minor quibble about this, uh, I don't, it's not that I want them to be, like, ratcheted or straight-up click-click joints, but I think a soft detent would have been really helpful, because this one has, like, a natural stopping point here, but the rest of these, uh, it, it's all a little bit loose, um, particularly these two. So it's kind of like you have to set up these two, and then adjust these two to be in between them. I kind of wish there was a soft stop on all four, just, like... Not even a hard stop, just a soft detent to get them into a, into a pleasant spread position, but whatever. That just means I actually have to put five seconds of concentration into this, so maybe that's my problem. This guy's tail, uh, well, this guy's tail fin, tail fin, tail feather, whatever you want to call this. This can waggle, it's actually on a double joint in there. The head on this dude, his neck joint as a bird, and his bird face joints are all super cool, because there's like a ball joint at the very bottom, so the whole thing can waggle around like this. And the bird head can do this, and then, due to a transformation thing, the throat panel can kind of move around with all that. So whenever you're doing something with the bird head, the throat can move with it, or tighten up with it. That's kind of neat. Also, the mouth can open, so you can be all like, Caw, caw, mother trucker, caw, caw! Uh, there's nothing really inside the mouth, but that's neat. I kind of like that. Because uh, he can also look up and forward, so if he's flying, he can be all like, I'm flying, yo! Down here, um, his little, like, these aren't really his arms. <laughs> all this orange junk on his sides look kinda, looks kind of like, if you really want to futz with the visual, you can kind of convince yourself it's part of the wing pack, but these things can twiddle. You can also remove them and stick, like, knives in there if you want. Um, it's really up to you. He's got a couple of joints in his waist. Uh, there is a waist swivel, but there's also a waist tilt. This is from the uh, the Feral Rex stuff. 
And this helps a lot with the bird mode, actually. That Like, that joint accomplishes a whole lot for having this guy look like he's swooping in all like he's going to pick up something and eat it. So, uh, that's kind of cool that that is a, a double-purpose joint. Also, if you want, this this tail thing is on its own swivel in there on, a, like, a separate plate. So if you want to have this swivel independently, if you're weird, then you can do that. The legs are on universal ratcheting joints. And unfortunately, the thigh swivels for the robot mode are locked up inside these legs. So you hit that kind of annoying thing where no matter what you do, you can't swivel the thighs to compensate so his feet get a little bit inward pointy. Now, the feet have got multiple joints. The, uh, the talons of talon are fairly posable as talons. There's like a main swivel up here, which has some very soft detented ratcheting on it. Uh, then the rear heel piece has a slightly stiffer detented ratcheting in it, and then these two front toes are just straight up friction joints. They are separate, so that means rather than having some kind of ankle tilt, when you put this guy down, say his feet are all straight, you can then like move the outer toes down to try to give him a bit more of a standing base. But this guy's standing base comes from two things, balance and his heels, because the heels are tight ratchets. They are tighter than the joint up here. I kind of wish that this and this were both super tight, because then I think this guy would be even more solid. Maybe it's just mine, but his uh, his topmost joint, I find, is a bit less tight than the heel joint, so it takes that extra, again, five seconds of concentration uh, to get him balanced in, uh, in a standing pose. Overall, though, like for bird posability, particularly through the wings and the head, uh, this guy's surprisingly fun to pose as a bird when usually I write off a bird mode as a block with a head on the end and some wings. Uh, this dude tries to take things a little bit farther and turns out all right. I want to say Talon's the simplest feral con to transform so far, but his legs are still a little complex. They're like a slightly simpler version of Bovis and Fortis's legs with a less tricky inverted foot flip and the addition of kind of turning his bird feet inside out. The robot arms are so simple an affair that all I'm going to call out are the lovely locking tabs that show an extra level of design care. The final robot face reveal is pretty cool since the faceplate camouflaged really well into the eagle mode's throat. After seeing three absolute beefcakes on the team, I'm finding Talon's more lithe body shape to be quite refreshing. It also sets a nice contrast to the big ol' wing pack he's wearing, and since he's a feral rexer, he's got some enthickening side of the thigh plates. Unfortunately, the gray talons from Eagle Mode stick out in a most unfortunate way here, brazenly chilling out on Talon's kneecaps and making little attempt to hide from view. I really wish these had ended up black, like on the box photography. One of the major tweaks Talon received in development was in his head sculpt, and I am digging the pointy headdress motif of the finished piece. His eyes are picked out in metallic red paint that shows up better than I'd expect, given the big old bird head ball cap. If you really don't like this look, there is an alternate transformation to hide more of the eagle face, reveal Talon's robot face more openly, and give him a hella cone head. Talon includes a pair of laser dagars and a particle beam sniper rifle to protect himself up close and pop the heads of fools from afar. The rifle's a big part of this guy's design imagery and has a great black and gunmetal two-tone color scheme. The scope section can fold out into an extended stock and Talon has zero trouble holding on to either of the rifle's handles. My one and only critique is that, being a sniper rifle, my taste would have preferred something a tad beefier all around. Thicker and longer is how I like my long-range weapon the laser dagars twist and clip in a similar fashion to the previous three Feral Cons melee weapons, but with notably less effort and scary testing of the plastic's tolerance. I like the curved blade looking a little copious and maybe a tad rammed down. Talon's third piece of weaponry are the obvious twin blasters on his forearms, which are removable to open up and make use of his 5mm hardpoint system. All his weapons can still make use of their eagle mode storage spots, too. Talon's wings have got a couple of custom hard points to finally offer some storage for Leo Dux's Lion Mode underbelly pieces, adding some jet booster chunk to the sniper's flight gear. Removable flight gear! The wings peg on solidly and can make use of a combiner port as well if you wish, though that makes the connection ludicrously tight. They can also plug onto Leo Dux's back in either mode, creating a winged robot warrior or a friggin' flying mechanical lion. This layered play pattern is layered and sublayered. I always like to start my posability up top, so let's look at this neck joint. It's literally the Eagle Mode's head joint, that same ball joint. It's just as expressive and lovely here. Also, 
his hat can wiggle, and your hat probably can't. So this guy's shirt can also twiddle. All right, can your shirt twiddle? We've all got to just accept that Talon's clothes are better than ours. I mean, he also has wings. They also work just like in the eagle mode with all the little bits and bobs and bits and things moving. Anyway, let's talk arms. This guy's arms are lovely ratchets forward and backwards, slightly louder ratchets outwards, and a non-ratcheted bicep swivel. And then you got the, the big, sick, double-jointed elbow, which is totally in part due to the transformation, but it helps here. Uh, and his wrists, I believe, can swivel. I am not going insane. They can swivel. For a second there, I thought I lost my mind. I haven't. His butt can move, too. Uh, can your butt move like this? On a little double hinge? It can't, can it? No! Uh, also, due to some stuff this guy does, uh, he gets the same advantage his eagle mode got, where he actually has a bit of a an abular downward bend that has stuff in here, so it's not like splitting his body apart when you use it. And that's pretty helpful. I mean, you can have that thing go down, he can be all like, what's on my shoe? I don't... Ew, why'd I step in that? His waist can turn. His hips are on universal joints. Nice buttery ratchet forward and backwards. Bit more of a ripply ratchet outwards. He's got himself... Uh, well, these things can move around on their own if you so choose. Uh, he's also got himself a little bit of uh, knee action. And it's pretty deep. Uh, it goes about that far. If you really want to, you can, you know, rip his foot out of the socket and totally double joint that, that ish. I mean, if you also break up the thigh thing. This doesn't work as a double joint. It's not meant to be a double joint. It goes that far. End of line. Still pretty good, though. And uh, his ankles are on kind of a combination of there. there is a ball joint, which allows for a little bit of tilt. A little bit of that good old-fashioned action. Uh, and then if you start messing with the transformation joint... There is a somewhat useful thing here where you can have the foot do that. And uh, you can get a little bit of that going on with the ball joint connection down here too. So he's got <clears throat> decently ambulatory feet. Uh, in general, pretty good posability. Uh, and any pose you put this guy in, if you really need to, uh, you can counterbalance with wings uh, if necessary. But he does have pretty wide, wide, pretty long heels. And uh, generally I've not had problems posing this guy. Feels pretty good. It's a well-rounded suite, doesn't really do anything that blows my mind, but nothing feels like it's missing either, so well done, Mr. Talon. Uh, yeah, just flaunt it. Flaunt it for us all! I'm still not sure if it's the new toy factor at work, but Talon feels like the nicest overall bang-for-your-buck piece of the Feral Rex team so far. He's got two playable modes, a quick and fun transformation, and some great style and weaponry. The thing that keeps me from coming to a solid decision on his effectiveness is the kludgy nature of his eagle mode. It adds a few perks to its G1 dive bomb source material, but is really blocky to a fault. I'm fairly certain that this has happened due to all the combination engineering inside Talon's chest, but as a standalone piece, I find myself really wishing there was a bit more compression to slim up his eagle mode torso. That big nit aside, I've found Talon to be really fun to mess around with. His wings go a long way in pumping up his bot mode fiddle factor, and he poses really well. His overall build quality is on the par set by the rest of the team, and I am really looking forward to the fifth member's arrival to finally complete the Feral Rex equation. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and this masterminded journey of ferocity has nearly come to its conclusion. So many sharp edges. So much black, yellow, red, and orange. So many... Pantones.